Hi everyone, my name is Alisa, and I'm so excited to be here today with all of you to celebrate Israel's Independence Day. We are joined by five amazing Emerson Fellows who are part of our campus year-long fellowship who get to run amazing educational programs about Israel on their campuses. They are joining us today from all over the world to make some lemonade as we explore the amazing story of the Jewish people in Israel because we are so inspired by how the Jewish people we're given so many lemons throughout their history, but we're able to make lots of lemonade because as we know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And you know, the Jewish people were given lots of lemons. They were kicked out of their ancestral homeland, lived for 1900 years in exile, experienced all sorts of discrimination, massacres, and ultimately genocide, but they never lost hope. And they were able to take matters into their own hand and make some lemonade by returning to their homeland and making it a wonderful, innovative, thriving, diverse, amazing country. And that is Israel. And on Israel's Independence Day, we are so excited to celebrate that while also thinking about what challenges we are still overcoming as a people and individually. And so I'm so excited to pass it over now to our amazing Emerson Fellows as they make some lemonade with you and talk about Israel's story of overcoming challenges and the challenges they're squeezing in their own lives. Hello everyone, my name is Lexi Leitner. I am a Stand With Us Emerson Fellow. I am from New York City, but I am currently in Ithaca, New York, four hours upstate. And I'm so excited to be with you today to squeeze out some challenges and squeeze out some lemonade. So I am making a pretty standard lemonade, actually the best lemonade ever on Google. So it's going to be good. Uh, I have some lemons, I have um, water, sugar, and that's it, and, and a pitcher. And I'm gonna be making some, some cool, normal lemonade. <laughs> I've been going through something really hard this year that a lot of other people are going through. I'm graduating college and that's constantly on my mind. Um, and especially during a pandemic, it's, it's really hard and I don't know where I'm gonna go after college. I don't know if there's gonna be jobs available. There's a lot of uncertainty at this time and it makes me really nervous. But you know, at least I'm squeezing some lemonade at home, which is super, super fun. And it makes me feel like I'm squeezing out my challenges and like, Maybe this lemonade is gonna turn out okay. Maybe it's not. There's also a lot of uncertainty there. But you know what? I think, I think I'm gonna make it. And what gives me a lot of hope is honestly, Israel and the Jewish people. Um, funny enough, it's, it's a really, really similar story. Um, Israel and the Jewish people have gone through a lot of hardships and a lot of uncertainty. And I'm sure when creating the state of Israel, um, a lot of people didn't know if it was going to work, if it was going to happen, but it did. Israel is amazing. It's diverse. It's thriving. It's a beautiful place. And the fact that Israel's Independence Day is coming up and that we are celebrating Israel as a country, I think this lemonade is going to turn out okay. And I think I'm going to be fine out of college. So now to you, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Phillip and I'm an Emerson Fellow. I go to Nova Southeastern University in Florida and right now I'm in Cooper City, Florida. Um, today I'll be making mint lemonade. Um, the mint to me represents Nana tea from Israel because I am addicted to it. Um, and when I was thinking about making lemonade today and squeezing out my challenges, my personal challenge that I have gone through um, was losing my grandma my senior year of high school. Um, that year, I also started college full time. Um, I early admitted and um, it was very hard for me when losing her because she was one of my number one fans. And she also educated me on Israel and told me about how important it was. And I got to go there last year. And when, when I was going all around the amazing, beautiful state, um, I, all I thought was her, about was her, and I felt like she was there with me the whole time. And squeezing out my challenges, I thought of the lemons representing the Jewish people and all the challenges that we have gone through. 
And when I was thinking about the sugar that we were putting into the lemonade, I was thinking about the sweetness that, that we now have of that Israel is exists and we have it. Um, and we are celebrating this Independence Day, which is an amazing celebration. And we can drink this lemonade to celebrate. And when I'm gonna drink it on Independence Day, I'm gonna think about the sour that is in the lemonade, which will remind me of the challenges that we went through, but the sweetness that we now have, because now we have Israel and we can go to Israel and celebrate there. Hello everybody, I'm Simone. I'm doing the Amazon Fellowship with Stand With Us UK, so I'm based in England. Um, and I'm happy to celebrate Israel's Independence Day today with all of you. And I'm gonna do this very basic lemonade recipe. I've got my jug here. I'm squeezing lemons and I've prepared some syrup, which you, honestly is the easiest thing ever. You just do half, half amount of water and the same amount of sugar and you heat it on the stove. And then when you, when you finish squeezing your lemons, you mix it together in the jug um, and you have a very simple but sweet recipe for homemade lemonade. It just reminds me of personal challenges um, and I'm gonna squeeze lemons just how I squeeze my personal challenge um, that for me personally was that I came to the UK as an international student from Germany um, because I wanted to take that leap forward. This year here was actually quite, I was quite disillusioned with everything and I felt quite alienated and I, all, all I want was to go home because I missed my community. Again, took a step forward and tried to meet different people and managed to build up this international community of like everyone that I wanted to meet from all walks of life. And this just reminds me of like how I squeeze these lemons to get experience and get like, get more from life. Um, and it just reminds me of Israel because Israel offers this international community and it's the melting pot of everyone from all over the world. Um, and that's why I'm happy to celebrate Israel's Independence Day with you today. When did you move to the UK? Uh, 2018, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I went in like 2011. <laughs> I was like, I was a baby. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leticia. I'm from Cape to Daniel, Brazil. I'm eight years old and I'm part of the Emerson Fellowship Program. Today, I'll be teaching you guys uh, to make a caipirinha that is the typical Brazilian drink. Or to do it, we're, you're going to need a cachaça, that is a famous uh, Brazilian drink made out of sugar cane, and it's also a distilled drink. So to do this caipirinha, we're going to we're, we're going to, to squeeze some lemons, just like we squeeze our challenges. A challenge that I passed this year was uh, doing the whole process of the graduation on high school, uh, all my senior year uh, through Zoom, and uh, not having uh, my final moments in school with many friends, and also starting college with, uh, in a pandemic was really difficult for me uh, to make friends, uh, to make a connection. Uh, I was in Israel during Yamas Maud, so for me it was really special. And now we're all celebrating Independence Day from our houses. Being there last year uh, in 2019 was really special for me. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gershon and I'm very happy to be with all these amazing people. Um, so like a lot of other people here, I am a student. Uh, I'm here in Canada and I'm wrapping up my fourth year of studies. And I have had the pleasure of being an Emerson Fellow over the past year, while also serving on my IOC board as president. So it has been a wonderful time. Everyone is going through something in their life. Uh, for myself, like a lot of people, uh, I'm a senior student. So I've been, you know, wrapping up my studies, doing grad school applications, and all the challenges that come in with that. In addition, like many people can relate to Zoom University. It's, it's not, you know, what it was advertised to be. So, you know, struggling with that, but that's okay. And in terms of a more personal challenge that's more specific to me that I've been dealing with is actually my grandmother, who unfortunately over the past year has gotten very ill. You know, if we're talking about squeezing the challenge, it's all about perseverance. And who knows better about perseverance than the Jewish people right now. Um, so 
know, the Jewish people have gone through a lot, as we know. Um, everyone is going through something in their own life. Uh, Israel specifically, I'm very happy because, as we know, the Jewish people established that through the perseverance. It serves as a bastion of safety for so many people and their families. And for myself and my grandmother, we're lucky that it has such a good healthcare system. For the lemonade that I'm making, um, I have my own base ingredients here. I have some pre-squeezed lemon juice, as uh, you can see. And for myself, I love myself a good fruity drink. Uh, so what I will actually be including in my lemonade, uh, in addition to the lemons, is the nice sweet syrup that I prepared for myself. Uh, in addition, I have some pureed raspberries, just to give it that extra tang, you know, that we all like. And to make it a much smoother drink, I'm also throwing a little splash of mango juice. And again, whatever people are going through, it will pass. You know, we're all going to be okay, so just keep swimming. Lemon. Uh, that's something that uh, I guess described my life uh, when you hear about them. So I will start with the beginning. Uh, I was born in Ethiopia. My, I made Aliyah in Operation Moses in, 80, uh, in 1985. Small background about the Ethiopian Jews, because a lot of people wondering how Jews ended up in Ethiopia. The common belief that we're the last tribe of Dan who left Israel after the first temple destruction and comparing to other Jewish communities around the world were isolated and we kept our Jewish customs and life according to the temple times. That's why the first time in my life I had a Sufganiya or a donut was in Israel. Uh, we never heard about Hanukkah or Purim. In the 80s, uh, Ethiopian Jews were suffering and the Israeli government had to do something about it. There was a rumor in the 80s that there are people who leading the way to Jerusalem. My parents uh, sold anything they could, just have enough money to the guide who led us to the borders of the countries and crossing the Sudanese desert. I'm talking more than eight weeks of walking barefoot, uh, mostly at night. During the day, we're hiding in caves and valleys between the mountains, because at that time, Ethiopia had a communist influence and the border were locked. And the only way to leave was to escape. So along the way, we had to deal with robbers, who knew about those groups were trying to leave the country, the lack of water and food, uh, but the biggest issue was medical. Uh, people were dying all the time. I'm talking about more than 4,000 people lost their way. I personally lost my sister. She was in her 20s. She got sick of malaria. And a few days later when she died, the only thing my parents could do was to bury her and keep going. But once again, that was the price of making Aliyah 35 years ago. And it wasn't over because the next station was refugees camp of the Red Cross in Sudan. Over there, ready for about nine months in really hard conditions, unbearable heat during the day, the cold at night. Once the Mossad people were ready, uh, they got into the camp with trucks, cattle truck, just a plastic cover on the top. We got on those trucks, they drove in the desert for a few hours, and then in the middle of nowhere, there was a cargo plane waiting for us. Uh, we got on those planes, everything took like minutes, and a nightmare, almost a year, was over in four hours flight straight to Israel. When we got to Israel, after the shock of seeing white Jews, uh, we were welcomed with open arms and we got all the support that we needed. And that what makes Israel a little bit different when it comes to immigration, absorption centers. It's a place, it's a government housing. Us coming from a third world country uh, really needed that help. I'm talking about these training wheels because I'm talking about running water, electricity, uh, bank, supermarket, government, everything was a whole new world for us. Uh, 18, joined the army, wanted to give that uh, back to a country, gave me so much, I volunteered to the Paratroopers Brigade, 101st, and finished my service as a captain, and went to Hebrew U in Jerusalem. I studied international relations. Years ago, uh, I started to work uh, on a new social enterprise. It's a school that teaches immigrants from Ethiopia, ladies uh, and their 40s and 50s. Uh, he used to be cleaning ladies and, and other uh, blue collar uh, uh, work. And, and now they're artists. They're making beautiful art. Uh, the program called Midja Maria. It's called, it means Genesis in Amharic, the Ethiopian language. It shows how you can help 
different people and different backgrounds. My eyes is doing not good. Uh, we're doing amazing for the fact we're the first generation in Israel. If you would have told me five years ago that the, uh, the head or the minister of Aliyah uh, in Israel will be an Ethiopian immigrant, uh, I would have laughed. Uh, we have two members in our Knesset. Uh, we have a lot of officers. We have actors, singers. And there's so many great examples of success in Israel when it comes to the Ethiopian community. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your story. It was it was beautiful and also I learned a lot. So thank you. Um, do you have any suggestions if we want to research later? Like, do you know an, a, a good Ethiopian singer that we can find? First of all, it depends on your, you know, music. Hip hop, uh, we have, for example, Kafe Shaho Hazak. Next girl who will be representing Israel in our Eurovision. She's going to be Ethiopian, Eden. And that's like uh, amazing. Uh, Israel, happy birthday. Uh, I think you've done amazing so far, and the last year has proven that. So uh, all I can wish you is just continue uh, uh, whatever you're doing. And I'm uh, proud to be part of this amazing country of, and this nation. And I wish you all Chag Sameach and hopefully to see you in Israel soon. Happy birthday, Israel. 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 On behalf of all of us at Stand With Us, we want to thank you for joining us today to celebrate Israel's Independence Day in squeezing out your challenges and making amazing, yummy lemonade out of lemons. A happy birthday to Israel. And if you would like to share with us what challenges you are squeezing out and also want to uh, send a happy birthday message to Israel, uh, please feel free to share and tag us in the comments. We would love to hear from you. And if you are interested in running one of your own Squeeze the Challenges events with Stan with us on social media, uh, please reach out to us. We can do this for high school, campus, or community. So if you are interested, email us at experiential at stanwithus.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.